Hi, I'm the Calculus Professor, and today we'll be talking about antiderivatives. In problem number 51, I want to determine the indefinite integral, integral of dx over x times the square root of x squared minus 100. All right, so again, I look at this guy, and I say, this looks very similar to me to something that I know already. If this 100 were just a 1, then I would know what the antiderivative is, correct? And the antiderivative would be uh, secant inverse of x. So what I want to do, <laughs> excuse me, uh, what I want to do is I want to look at if y is equal to secant inverse of x, then what's the derivative? Well, I know it. It's 1 over um, absolute x times the square root of x squared minus 1. Right? So how does this change if I decide to change x into something else? What would that something else look like? Well, how about x over 10? Okay, Because I know that I'm going to square whatever the x is, and this seems like something squared as well. So let's try x over 10. So what if I have y is equal to secant inverse of x over 10? Let's see what would happen. Then I get that dy dx is equal to well, the derivative of secant inverse of something is 1 over that thing, x over 10, we could take absolute value if I want, times the square root of uh, x over 10 quantity squared minus 1. But then I need to multiply that by the derivative of x over 10, which is... 110. Now, I could move this 1 tenth inside. Notice that this 10 cancels with this 10. And so what this 10 and this 10 cancel, and I'm left with that dy over dx is equal to 1 over absolute x times the square root of x squared over 100 minus 1. This is very close to what we have over here. The only difference is this needs to be multiplied by 10 on the bottom to be this. Okay? So if I were to multiply this thing by 1 over 10, then it would be exactly this guy. So what I should have started with is not secant inverse of x over 10. I should have started with 1 tenth of secant inverse of x over 10, and then I would have gotten exactly what I need over here. So let's write it that way. This must equal secant inverse of x over 10 divided by 10. Now, if I take the derivative of this, the top's derivative, this is just a constant, so it doesn't really matter, but the derivative here is exactly this, and when I divide that by 10, I get exactly what I want my derivative to be over here. So the antiderivative of dx over x times the square root of x squared minus 100 would be secant inverse of x over 10 divided by 10, plus our constant of integration. And we're done.